This next one's for anyone looking to get started making games of their own. Playcrafting's Unity instructor, Will Delventhal of Mew and Me, will make a game from scratch in just 30 minutes. Hello, Play NYC people. My name is Willem Delventhal, and I am the current instructor for the Unity Playcrafting Bootcamp. Basically, go from knowing absolutely nothing about making games or coding to being a game development god in just eight weeks. And by game development god, I mean like you'll be pretty good at making games and you'll know how to use Unity and you'll be able to keep making games yourself. Uh, yeah, so the next course is starting on August 31st. We are gonna go, like I said, from nothing to four completed games. Knowing nothing to four games in just eight weeks. It's intense, it's a lot of fun, you get a wacky guy like me teaching you how to do it. Um, and I was asked to do some kind of talk to help you understand what the course would be like, or uh, get you interested in signing up or investigating more. And I had no idea what that would look like, because I don't know how I'm going to talk about a course for 30 minutes and have that actually be fun. Then I had an idea. Instead of that, instead of doing a talk, I'm going to do a game jam. I'm going to build a game using Unity in just 30 minutes. 30 minutes to build a game. I got to tell you, I filmed this earlier, so you're going to see me magically change my outfit in a second. But it was <laughs> a lot, and uh, I struggled a little bit. The game is technically finished, but uh, you can see what you can complete in Unity using the power of Unity in just 30 minutes. Now to give you a little bit of context, Unity is a game engine, if you don't already know, uh, and it is an IDE. It is the most powerful and one of the most, uh, the most in fact, used game engines in the industry. 65% of games are built in Unity. To give you real context, the second place is Unreal Engine, which some people will say is better. 18% of people use Unreal Engine, so you can tell which side of that battle I'm on. Uh, and yeah, Unity is just a powerful, incredible tool. So I hope you're interested. Hopefully you're gonna have fun watching this video. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to email me at will.delventhal at gmail.com. You can ask about the course or just about me. I love communicating with the industry and the playcrafting folks are awesome. So I just love talking to people here. And uh, I think that's it. You're going to see me struggle now for the next 30 minutes. Hopefully you have fun. Email me, reach out, sign up for the course. It starts August 31st. I would love to have you. Bye. Bye. Let's start. 30 minutes on the timer. Boom. Okay. So this is Unity. Unity is super powerful. I'm going to start by throwing in some kind of simple uh, input. So what I need, first of all, is some kind of image to actually work with. So like I said, the only thing that I actually looked up here is to make sure I could find some image assets for me to use. So I'm going to grab a couple here. I'm going to grab a flipper. I'm going to grab a uh, metal ball, metal ball PNG. I'm going to grab one of these. That's an actual PNG. Are you a PNG? Good. Thank you. Good. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to grab a, and I'm going to grab a, uh, what did I look up that? Yeah. Pinball bumper PNG. Yes. Perfect. A Smash Bros one, which is beyond the shadow of a doubt, the best one I could find. So let's grab all three of those. I'm going to show you how easy it is to import images into Unity. I'm going to click and drag all three of these guys into my Unity project. And now, boom, I have all three of these images ready for me to use. I'm going to stay organized, even though I have no time to do anything. I'm going to make an images folder. I'm going to organize this a little bit. Just pop it up here. My project folder here is similar to the library in Photoshop. So it actually allows me to organize everything that is available to me in the project, even if it isn't in the game itself. So here we go. We got some crap on the screen. I'm just going to drag and drop my image into the screen, which automatically makes a game object that is available for me to play with, uh, which is in fact a sprite, which you can see over here in the inspector, which is how we look at any of the objects in Unity. I'm going to rotate it so that it's at about the correct position for a game of pinball. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this sucker. Actually, I'm going to wait to duplicate it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a collider. Now, a collider allows physics to happen. Stuff will actually run into colliders. Now, this is a very strange shape, so I can't use a typical collider. I'm going to use a mesh collider and see what that does for me. Wrong, wrong type, wrong type, wrong type. I'm wasting time. I'm going to use a polygon collider. Uh, and there we go. Look, Unity automatically creates a collider. You can see that green outline there that is generally the correct shape. And uh, that looks perfect. So there we go. We've got a good looking collider there. I'm going to name this left flipper so that I am a little bit more organized. I have, oh my God, 28 more minutes to keep building this game. All I've got is an image on the screen. I am going to duplicate this. I'm going to make a right flipper. 
Sprite Flipper. Uh, and I am going to use another built-in Unity function. I can click Flip X. Oh my geez, the rotation, no. Here we go, I'm gonna re-rotate this. That collider we can see is totally off. I can fix that very quickly by coming up to my polygon collider here and hitting reset and it will totally not fix it all. Oh God, oh God, okay, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna rotate this, that'll have to do. We won't use mirror, uh, mirrored uh, sprites, but that's fine, it looks great anyway. I'm going to, bing, look at that. That looks like pinball, right? Perfect, okay. Now that we have some balls here on the sides of the screen, or excuse me, some paddles here on the sides of the screen, the other thing that I'm gonna quickly do is throw in some empty objects and just make myself some bounds. So this is gonna be a left bound. It's gonna be hyper simple. All I'm gonna do is add a box collider to this guy, and then I am going to scale it to be the correct size. That's not gonna work for me, is it? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do instead. I'm gonna make a sprite. Like I said, I didn't really practice this ahead of time. I'm not sure if I'm even gonna finish this, but hopefully we can get somewhere that you guys are interested in learning how to make Unity games from me. I don't know if I can keep talking this much this whole time. What am I even trying to do here? Uh, I need to add a sprite renderer. Here we go, Sprite Render, thank you so much. Sprite Render, Unity has a couple of built-in sprites that we can choose from. This is not gonna be something that the player can actually see. This game on the right side is what the player sees. This is my workspace. So anything that I see outside of this white box right here, the player is not actually gonna see. The reason that I added a sprite here is so that I can resize it to be the correct size. Oh boy, I've got some uh, events coming up soon. Uh, so that I can resize this to be generally the right size on uh, visually on the side of the screen, just so that I can tell that it's the right size. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add that box collider to it. Now this box collider 2D, once again, automatically attempts to snap to the correct size. Now I have actual a left bound on the side of the screen. So when I start creating my balls, it will stop itself from going off the side of the screen. I'm gonna make another one over here. And then I'm gonna make a last one up top, just in case we shoot one super far off the screen or something like that. And make it a little bit smaller. Oh God, gotta zoom in here. Here we go, make it a little bit wider. Looks perfect, put that on the top of the screen amazing okay so we've got some bounds so now we know that the ball isn't going to shoot out of the uh out of the screen let's make this the upper bound wow <laughs> i once did a one hour game jam i have never done a half hour game jam i'm going to be honestly impressed with myself if i manage to do this thing okay we've got bounds so now we know that the balls aren't going to shoot off the side of the screen the next thing that we need is actual input so i'm going to make myself an empty object create empty I'm going to name this guy Game Controller. Not important what I name these things. These are what are called game objects, which is just a single object that can exist in the screen. A left flipper, left, right flipper, left bound, right bound. All these things are all individual game objects, including the Game Controller, even though we can't actually see it. It's just a convenient place for us to organize ourselves. So let's go ahead and write our first script. I'm going to name this guy Game Controller. Uh, it is the guy that controls the game. It's the head honcho of our game. I'm going to attach it to my Game Controller scene object here which is not working for me, which is perfect, perfect. Very good, very good, hold on here. Oh, Unity is clogging up. This is great, this is great. <laughs> We're gonna see if this works for us. Hold on, come on Unity, you can catch up. You're doing great, okay, awesome. Dealing with all kinds of problems here. Here we go, we got a game controller. We're slapping it on this, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit edit script, and Visual Studio will automatically open up my script, allowing me to edit stuff. What you just looked at there is a script from an old, actually from the class in about, 28 minutes, I'm going to be teaching this exact course to some of our more advanced students. So if you want to hop in and learn how to make games, please, I encourage you to do so. So the game controller has to do a couple of things. The main thing it's got to do is listen for input. That's super easy to do. There's a function, which I'm going to teach you what functions are. I don't really have time to right now, but there's a function that Unity has built in called update, which happens every frame. As we know, games have frame rate about 30 to 60 frames happen every second, which means this thing is happening real often. All I'm gonna do inside of this frame, uh, all, all I'm gonna do inside this update loop, <laughs> Jesus, is check for uh, get key down. I'm gonna check if the player has pressed a key. I'm gonna get a key code. So I'm gonna ask what key it actually is. I'm gonna allow them to hit A, or I'm gonna optionally allow them to hit the left arrow key so they have two different input types that they are allowed to use. Why not? It's super easy to do, left arrow. Now this will listen for both left and right input. I'm going to slap in the same thing, copy and paste for D and for right arrow. This is what's going to control our bumpers. Now, we don't actually have the stuff that we need to make the bumpers happen. I'm going to simplify this and make it move a little bit more quickly once Unity catches up. Come on, Unity, we don't have time. We only have 23 minutes. Come on, Unity, you can do it. Okay, now that Unity is caught up, 
This is a little bit of an, a clunker computer, so I am trying to rush through this thing. I'm actually gonna use animations to move the paddles. I could use something programmatic, but the problem with programmatic stuff is that it's generally harder to get picture perfect. So I'm just gonna make an animation, and that way uh, I can look at it and tell it exactly how to move. So I'm gonna make this the left paddle controller. We may be able to use the same animator for both the left and right paddle, but I'm not exactly sure how that would work, and I'm, I'd rather just have it work Definitely, and make two copies of the same animation, even though they're basically exactly the same. Uh, left paddle idle. And one more animation here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Left paddle. Uh, uh, pressed. This is the animation that we're going to make that goes like this. Uh, we're going to duplicate all of those, highlight all of them, replace these with right paddle controller, right paddle idle, right paddle press okay now every single animator needs an and every single yes every single animator needs an animator controller so on my left flipper i have changed the names of my things but that's fine i'm going to add the animator i'm going to add the animator controller left paddle control i'm going to open up my animator I'm going to throw in, this is what's called a state machine, y'all. State machines are wonderful. They basically allow us to decide how animations actually play together. If you take the class with me, we're gonna go way more in depth than that. This is the idle animation. I'm gonna slap in my left paddle idle. Left, left, left paddle idle. I'm gonna create an empty state. I'm gonna name this guy uh, left paddle pressed. Left paddle pressed, left paddle pressed. Come on, y'all, come on. All right, there we go. Having difficulty typing things when I've got time pressure. 20 minutes left and all we've got is some paddles on the screen. I don't know if this is gonna work. You guys might never see this video. Here we go, make a transition to our left paddle pressed and make another transition back. This is how we decide when the animation will actually go between them. We're gonna use what's called a parameter. Parameter lets us decide whether or not something should go between it. I'm gonna call this pressed. So this animation is only gonna get triggered when we use the pressed animation. And this animation going back is going to get triggered as soon as the animation ends. So it's gonna go like this and then it's gonna go back to idle. So that is the correct relationship. I'm actually, now that I have done that correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my right paddle controller and then duplicate my left paddle controller again. So that way I have the correct relationship between animations. And, uh, it's hard to type. Okay, now we got a right paddle controller, perfect. My left flipper, uh, because I decided to name that something different. Each of these states has the correct animation, looks good. I'm gonna come down to my animation tab here, which allows me to actually have a timeline where I'm editing the animations. And we can see that I can select both the idle and the pressed. I'm gonna add the uh, transform of this object and add the rotation of this object. It's going to stay in the idle phase. It's going to stay at exactly zero, which is totally fine. And then in the pressed state, we're actually gonna to need to do the animation. So in the transform, I'm gonna look for that rotation and I'm going to, uh, here we go, look at it in the scene so that I can see it actually happening and I'm gonna hit record. It starts here at the idle phase, but then just a little bit faster, right around maybe 10th of a second, I'm gonna rotate it upwards. Oh no, it's rotating at the wrong face, <clears throat> at the wrong place. I'm gonna stop recording. I'm going to click on this sucker and I'm going to move, ooh, uh, I'm going to move the, oh my God, let me, let me click it, let me click it, let me click it. Here we go. Uh, I have to move the, oh, anchor point of the sprite. Oh boy, this is exciting, y'all. We are just going through all kinds of things. This is actually, see, this is what I'm talking about. I didn't prepare for this at all. So I go into the sprite editor and I can actually move the anchor point of the sprite itself. That is the custom pivot that should be, if I'm remembering correctly, we I might be wrong here and we might, <laughs> we might need to deal with what I'm wrong again, but I believe that is now where we're going to rotate from. Let me try here. I am wrong, I'm totally wrong. Oh boy, okay, so in our game, we're gonna have to have it so that the, the paddles just go like this because that's all the time that I got and maybe I can go back and fix it. We're just gonna have to leave it how it goes. Now the uh, animator got turned off somehow. We are going to reset our polygon collider. Good, that's good. It at least snapped itself to the correct position, which is fantastic. Uh, we did mess with both of our sprites, so we're gonna put those back in the correct position. We're gonna have to reset the position of this one as well. Let's move her back right there. For now, like I said, it is unfortunate, and hopefully I'm gonna be able to remember how to do this. The pivot on the, um, on the paddle itself is wrong, but I don't have time to fix it, so I'm gonna ignore it and pretend everything's okay, and then we'll come back to it and see if we've got time to fix it. I'm hoping we can get the game working, and then we'll have maybe 10 minutes to actually get it polished a little bit, uh, but otherwise we're gonna have a ball that falls and we can knock it around, and that'll be totally fine. All right, so we got left battle pressed. We're gonna put it over to this 10th of a second into the animation, and we are going to rotate it 
upwards. So this, we can see now, if we play the animation, it's going to shoot upwards and then do, wow, a really janky little thing. Oh, you know what we can actually do? Instead of messing with the rotation exclusively, what we can also do, we actually already have this. We messed with the position right here. If I remove this property, I'm just curious how this is gonna work. Oh, it did work, yes! Oh my God, I'm brilliant. Okay, so we got a uh, paddle that shoots upwards and then it comes back down. We're gonna move this closer in. I think we're gonna have to make this whole animation faster because it's a paddle. Oh, that doesn't look too, too bad. Let's move it to right there. That'll be really, really fast. Great, that's a paddle. That's definitely a paddle. All right, so we've got that first animation working. Let's slap in our right flipper and get this one working. We're gonna have to go back to the animator. We're gonna have to click on the idle here and switch this over to the right animator. Like I said, it might be possible that the two animations work seamlessly together, but I'm not totally confident in that and I don't wanna spend the time playing with it and I think I'll actually save time just making the animation twice. So I'm going to click on my right flipper here. Now come back to my animation. Uh-oh, uh oh, uh -oh, uh oh what I'm missing. Ah, animator. Gotta put an animator on anything that you want to animate. So I'm going to put the animator on this right paddle controller. Oh my God, I've got 16 minutes, y'all, and I don't even have input. Yo, if we come to a point where it just goes like this, it'll have to be, it'll have to be good. Uh, let's see, we got a right paddle controller on there. We now have our animations. Oh, I didn't switch out the animations in my animator. If I come to my right flipper and I click on my idle, this, oh my God, I just, I, I totally just switched this, which means I probably switched it over in my left paddle controller, which is fantastic because that means now I gotta go back and switch it back. Let's cut our left paddle and left flipper. Oh my God, I'm running out of oxygen. Let's check this out. I did do that, son of a, okay, let's switch this back real quick. That's not too bad, we're okay. We just wasted 10 or 15 seconds. Right paddle idle, where are we on? Left paddle pressed. Okay, we've got our two animations. The animation relationship that we were looking for should be working correctly now. Our right flipper, look at that. We have the right paddle idle. We're gonna add the transform rotation. Just leave that as the standard rotation so that when we're in idle, it sits at the correct place. And then our right paddle pressed, we're going to add that rotation again. We're just gonna record and you know what, we're gonna have to, instead of going here, we're gonna click on this guy and just check what the rotation is at that most highly rotated point so that we're rotating at exactly the same point. It looks like the rotation is 4.353. So let's come back to our right flipper and in our right paddle pressed at the 0.5 seconds, we're gonna hit record and we're gonna drop in the rotation of 4.353, oh my God, it totally doesn't work because it's in reverse. This is why I had to make two different animations. That's okay. We're gonna add property, transform, uh, rotation. So now it is set. We've got two different frames that are at the correct rotation. Now we're just gonna have to eyeball this. It won't be picture perfect, but that's okay. We'll rotate this upwards. Oh, look at that. It's like trying to correct for me. That's a little bit frustrating. Let's delete this position and remove properties. There we go. Okay, okay, okay. That'll that'll just have to do, y'all. We got 14 minutes, that's how it's gonna be. We got a left and a right bumper working. We have two separate animators for them. Now let's do some scripting. So in our, uh, in our game controller, we're gonna leave a space to grab both of these animators. One of the most powerful things about Unity is that we have an inspector where we can drag and drop things. So I'm gonna make a left paddle animator. I am misspelling things, but that'll have to do. I've got less than half the time left. I'm gonna grab a right, oh my God, a oh my God, <laughs> a right paddle animator. Here we go. Now, when we hit the A or the left arrow, we can make this left paddle animator run by hitting, uh, by first resetting our trigger. This makes sure that we are not uh, this makes sure that we are not uh, running two triggers at once, which actually, I guess, wouldn't be a problem if there's only one trigger, but that's fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit a set trigger, and I'm gonna call it pressed. Basically, this is how we communicate with the, that animation machine that we created. It won't make total sense to you right now if you've never done it before, but this is, uh, I'm just gonna tell you it's gonna work. All right, so in our game controller now, we're at the 17 minute mark, and hopefully we have function. <laughs> Functional input, jeepers. All right, right flipper is gonna move over into our right flipper spot. This is the inspector, this is the power of Unity. I made some script over there and then I can connect it in the inspector here visually instead of having to mess with it. Let's see, I'm gonna run my game and I'm gonna hit left and right once Unity catches up. Come on Unity, we ain't got no time for this. We ain't got time for this. Okay, Unity is running. Oh my God, look at that, look at that. It's a working game engine. What, what? Okay, great. 
Oh, okay, I know what's happening. So you notice how there's a little bit of a delay there? The problem with that is that our idles are a second long and it's not letting us exit the animations unless the uh, unless that one second long animation is complete. So all we gotta do is move into our idle animation here and just go ahead and delete that second frame. That'll allow us to make that idle infinitesimally small. And that way, hopefully, when we play now, it'll respond immediately when we're hitting left and right. Come on, Unity, come on, Unity, we can't test it. We can't, we can't spend this long testing. Great, you know what, you know what? It's, it's perfect, this is how it's gonna be. All right, so we got two uh, paddles working. We might make it so that they shoot higher up if we have time for it, but we don't have time for it. So let's go ahead and add in a place to record our score. I'm going to, uh, where the heck is it? UI text. I'm gonna make a UI object. Everything in Unity when we're doing UI uh, exists in what's called a canvas, which is this massive thing right here. It looks massive, but it actually does exist. We can see right down here in the bottom left of our game, we can see that text that we just added. So let's go ahead and make that bigger. Boop and go ahead and increase the size of the text. The inspector here, if you haven't noticed, that's where everything actually changes. That's where we're editing our text. So I'm gonna bring my text box up towards the middle of the screen. I'm gonna reset it so that it's centralized. I'm gonna move it towards the top. I'm gonna to anchor it to the top of the screen so if we change the size of our screen, it's not gonna mess with things too much. And then I am going to just put a, a placeholder in there because the game controller is actually going to control what this thing sets. Okay, now, all right, we got a uh, score attached to the top of the screen. This is great. I'm gonna change the color of it to, oh, I'm gonna change the color of it to white. Oh my God, come on, y'all. I'm gonna change the color of it to white just so that it's a little bit easier to see. And now we got score sitting there. Uh, we need a couple of things though to make the score actually happen. So we're going to make a new object. We have our unnamed ball right here. We're going to drop this into our scene. Ah. So uh, the canvas you can see sort of exists in a different space from the main game. If I double click on anything in the inspector, it'll zoom into the main game. Our ball here is a little bit too big, obviously, but we can scale that down. No problem. I'm going to make that a 0 0.25, maybe even a little bit smaller, 0 0.15, 0 0.5. Great, that looks fantastic. Now we got a ball, we're gonna name this ball. We're gonna add a rigid body. A rigid body actually allows, that is the wrong kind of rigid body, that is a 3D rigid body. We need a 2D rigid body. A rigid body actually tells Unity that we want to apply physics to this thing, so now it's going to fall over time instead of just hanging in space like our flippers are. Uh, I am going to add a collider to it because our colliders need to know. I'm gonna add a circle collider, which once again tries to auto snap to size, but it's not always perfect. We can resize that ourselves by just making that radius smaller. That looks pretty good. Um, now we have a ball that should fall and should run into our paddles and we should be able to knock them around with the paddles. So let's see. Ball's going to fall in just a second here. Once the unity starts running. There we go. Oh, and I missed it. Let me try that again. Uh, our paddles also are a little bit slow. So probably we should increase the speed of those animations and increase the amount that it actually rotates. So we'll do that in just a second. So here we go, let that fall again. I just wanna make sure that the animation actually affects that collider and make sure that they run into each other. And it does, great, that looks great. Okay, so uh, I am going to edit those animations even though it's gonna take me an extra second and oh my God, I'm under 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we'll see what we can get through in 30 minutes. Hopefully this is entertaining, even if I don't make something wonderful for you guys. Uh, so my right paddle, left paddle pressed. I am going to shorten this animation. If you select multiple frames and then hit this little guy here, you can actually drop down how quickly stuff will move. I'm gonna move it down to a fourth of a, uh, fourth of a second. Uh, and then I'm going to hit uh, record and just make this number larger. So it's a more drastic increase in the animation itself. So hopefully that's going to do better for us. Uh, then I'm gonna switch to my right paddle and I'm going to switch to the right paddle pressed. And once again, I'm gonna shorten this down to about 0.4. Uh, that looks good right there. And then at the 0.2 mark, I'm gonna make this more drastic, make it 140 or so. That's wrong, it's actually reversed for us, which is interesting. So I'm gonna make this 125. It's just because this guy is backwards, which is totally normal given how we set things up. Uh, let's see if I can knock that ball around a little bit now. Pause, pause. Pause, pause, let's go. Ah, this computer's too slow for this challenge. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So something's happening with my paddles where they aren't actually getting through their whole animation. I can check this by coming into my animator here and actually watching what happens as I click things. So right now I've got my right paddle selected and we can see that I am in the idle animation. If I hit right, we can see that it thinks it's going through that animation, but then is immediately stopping itself, which is interesting. Uh, if I, it does seem to be correctly going through the animation, but it's not getting even close to how far it should be rotating. So, 
<laughs> I have to try to course correct here with eight minutes to go and I don't even have resetting or scoring working or a functional bumper. Let's see. So this animation should be shooting us out here. What I'm assuming is happening is this animation is so short that Unity is upset with us. So let's just test that theory. If I move this out to uh, a 20th of a second and I hit play, right? That looks, is that still not getting as far as it should be? That's also not centralized there. Uh, come on. That still looks like it's not going as far as I should be. So the animator route may not have been correct for this, uh, but it was my first thought. It was a test and we are dealing with the consequences either way. So let me see. If I play and hit it now, what happens? Got seven minutes. Unity, you gotta, you gotta move faster for me. This is just a little too slow. Hmm. 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 Okay, so I'm pretty sure that my entire hypothesis about using the uh, using the animations is not working well for us. It looks like that collider is kind of lagging behind and it's not actually applying much force to it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've got six minutes. I'm going to use what's called a physics collider, uh, a physics material, excuse me. I'm going to click on my left one and I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to click on both of them. I am going to slow them down a little bit because I think that is helping at least some. I'm going to set this back down to point. 10. So still longer than we had before, but ultimately still pretty fast. I'm going to click on this left one and try to apply that here as well. And extend this from 0.4 to 0.10. Here we go. Fantastic. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do to cheat a little bit. It's not going to quite be pinball, but it's going to have to do. I'm going to make what's called a physics material. I'm going to go, shh, I know. I'm going to go down to my, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm going to go down to my, where is it? Physics material down here. Physics material 2D. I'm going to make a bumper. I'm going to make a uh, flipper material. This allows me to influence how physics happens on these materials. So I'm going to make the bounciness on this guy 0.8 and just see how that does. A bounciness of one should be reflecting force uh, in a one-to-one -one ratio. And in fact, actually, I think I want it higher than. And we're going to be able to test this and run it as we go. But I'm going to make it a 1.5 and see what happens. It should be reflecting the ball even faster than runs into it. I can select both of my flippers at once. And now in my colliders, I can drag that flipper material into my material slot box there for physics materials. And let's see what happens now. Five minutes left. Let's see if we can at least get this thing scoring. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ugh. Wow, that's totally reasonable. <laughs> you don't even you don't even have to hit it. That's fine. It's pinball. <laughs> okay, so we've got the I, I'm gonna to make it at least a little bit more of a challenge, I'm gonna move these paddles a little bit to the left and right. Uh move this one down so it's a little bit more even. This is a waste of time, but I'm just being a perfectionist here. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna to add to the game then before I run out of time here and have to leave you guys is my bumper. Now, that actually looks amazing. It's the perfect size, which is great. I'm gonna add once again my same things, my circle collider. Now my circle collider is a little bit too big for sure, so I'm gonna reduce the scale on that. 0.75 seems to be about right. I am going to, same thing, I'm gonna add that physics material to it because that actually seems to look great. I'm gonna drop that into my circle collider. I'm gonna add just like mm, two bumpers, we'll say. That'll be, that'll be fine for a, a small example of a uh, pinball type game. I'm gonna drop the ball here. Um, and I have a little cheat for how I'm going to make this ball work, even though we are running out of time. So what I have to do is hook up my bumper so that they actually relate score. In order to do that, I'm going to make a, another C sharp script. I'm going to call this just the bumper controller because I can't come up with something better right now because I'm running out of time. Oh boy. Come on, Unity. You really, you really can't do this to me. You really, come on, Unity. This is not Unity. This is an old computer. My current computer is unfortunately at the Apple store getting fixed. So I'm using my backup rig and boys it's low uh, bumper controller there we go I'm gonna copy that name because uh, a little in fact that trips up many new many new engineers is whenever you rename a script in the inspector you have to rename it also inside of the script itself you can see here uh, that is not the script that I opened. Can I open? Oh, it is the script that I opened. Excuse me. Um, you can see that this actually has the wrong name here. I just have to make sure I name this the correct thing. My bumper controller is going to use a very simple, uh, built in unity function called public void on collision enter. Uh, and it has to be on collision enter 2d. 
and Collision 2D because we are making a 2D game. And basically all that's gonna happen is whenever on Collision Enter 2D happens, we're gonna have a public uh, uh, game controller, game controller. And in the game controller, we're gonna tell something to happen. We're just gonna say game controller dot add score. Okay, so anytime something touches this bumper, we're gonna add score. It is currently complaining because we don't have that function, but we can make it real quick. Public void add score. We're just gonna say this private variable, private int score equals zero. And now score plus equals 10, just a totally arbitrary number, just to have something that is functional. Then we are also gonna import the Unity UI package, Unity Engine.UI. How am I doing on time right now? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Two and a half minutes, Unity Engine.UI. So that way we can use text objects, which we're gonna need. We're gonna make a public text uh, score text. And now the score text, anytime we add score, score text dot text, we're actually going to update what that thing says. Score to text is text equals score. And then we're gonna add whatever the score currently is to it. Great, that's gonna work just fine. I'm gonna hook those things up on the bumpers once Unity catches up. Come on, Unity. <laughs> oh, no. Come on, old girl. This computer, I think, is a 2012. Uh, and it is not only running Unity, but it's also recording this. Uh, let's see my bumpers. I've got to add the bumper controllers to them. Add component, bumper controller. Whoops, I misspelled that. Bumper controller, great, that's gonna work fine. I've gotta drag the game controller into them. That should mean they work just fine. The game controller also needs a reference to that text object as we saw there. So I'm gonna drag that and drop it in here. That should work just fine, but I've got a minute and a half and I want this ball to do something special. So here's what I'm gonna do. Anytime this, I'm gonna make a new thing at the bottom of the screen here. Where is my upper bound? Great, I'm gonna duplicate that upper bound. I'm gonna drag it to the bottom of the screen and I'm going to create a what's called lower bound bound. So now my lower bound is going to need its own new script. I'm going to call this reset ball. I'm running out of time. No time for creative names. Let's open up that reset ball script. Oh my God, I've got under a minute. All right. All right. So we need a public void. Uh, no, we need a public game object, public game object, or even just a public transform ball. Uh, and all we're gonna do here is, uh, no, come on, come on, come on. Public void on collision enter 2D. We're gonna say ball dot position equals new vector three, which is a type of movement object. Are we running out of time? We got 26 seconds. Vector three, all we're gonna say is ball dot X. We're gonna use the ball's current Y position where is the ball? Where is the ball? Where are you, ball? What is your current Y position? Your Y is 4.3. We're gonna say 4.34. So if you can see what I'm doing here, basically I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reset the position of the ball to be at the top of the screen whenever it runs into us. No! <laughs> okay. So I am going to just pretend that I didn't notice that, that I'm on my last line, right? You got to give me some grace. Let me finish this last line. Let's see if it works right out of the box. What this should do is whenever the ball touches the bottom of the screen, it's just gonna automatically pop to the top of the screen, which is kind of my cheat to make this thing look like we are playing forever, even though uh, we don't have a script. I'm gonna say that this the, this extra minute or so that I'm getting right now, I deserve because uh, Unity was being slow. Not Unity, once again, my computer is being slow. This old girl has done a lot for me. I'm gonna drop the ball in here, and hopefully anytime something runs into this thing, it's going to pop it to the top of the screen. So let's see. All of that mayhem in the last minute. Let's see if we have a semi-functional game. Okay, look at that. Score is definitely working. I can touch the paddles. Great. That's definitely working. <laughs> the bounciness cheat that we used is maybe overpowered. Let's just, let's just, let's just, there we go. Okay, great. Oh, <gasps> totally functional game. 100% complete in 30 minutes and a bit. Okay, guys. So that was, that was a lot of fun. I have never built an entire game and tried to explain what I was doing in just 30 minutes. 
Hope you had fun. My ball just disappeared off the screen. I'm going to stop recording now because I have to teach class in two minutes. If you enjoyed this, I hope you sign up for the next Unity course. It is a blast. You make four games in just eight weeks from no experience to four games in just eight weeks. It's a whole hell of a lot of fun. I have fun with you guys teaching you how to make it. And uh, yeah, I hope you sign up. There will be a link somewhere. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to work. There will be a link somewhere for you to go check out the information and potentially sign up. And there should be a link also to sign up for my email list if you want to hear from me and my brothers. We run a gaming company together. Okay, that's it. Hope you had fun. I'll see you again sometime soon. Bye-bye.